Hello everyone and welcome to Drummer Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in this video I'm going to show you how to perform an insulation resistance test on a single phase induction motor. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. In this video, we're gonna be performing an insulation resistance test on a single phase induction motor. This specifically is a motor that I have pulled out of a HVAC unit. This is a condenser fan motor. That is the purpose of this motor. And just a heads up, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And let's get straight into it. There are quite a few terms that you might find out in the field, how to meg out a motor, how to mega a motor, how to ohm out a motor, but truly we're going to be performing an insulation resistance test and we're going to be using a megameter and in today's video we're going to be using the Subco M500. The Subco M500 is affordable and without a doubt the easiest megameter on the market. This meter comes with two 9 inch leads where at the ends are alligator clips and we only have one button to use here. It really cannot get easier than that. On the right hand side, it tells us if we are bad, if there's a caution or we are good. And on the left hand side, it's gonna represent our megohms. And the way we're gonna get that indication is through a LED light signal. Here's all the information on the motor if anyone is curious. This is a 208 to 230 volt single phase motor. Regardless of your voltage, this test will remain the same. For this specific type of motor, this is an outdoor motor where the connections are actually enclosed. So we actually have the wires coming out. So if you have this type of motor where the wires are out, we're gonna be performing the test with the wires coming out of the motor. And if you don't have that type of motor, the first step will be to remove the wires from the motor. We wanna isolate it. As you can see for this type of motor, we have the wires coming directly out, so we're going to be performing our tests with the wires. For some motors, you might be able to remove all the wires, and for others, you actually might have a mix of both. So in this case, there's some wires that can be removed and some that cannot be. So the whole goal will be to isolate it as much as you can, if you can. Before using a megameter, please understand exactly what you're doing and please understand this video is for professionals only as we are about to apply 500 volts to this motor, so safety first. Before we begin the process, I'm just quickly going to explain what we're actually doing here. So we're going to check each terminal or lead coming out of the motor relative to a grounding point and the grounding point is going to be the casing of your motor. So you're gonna have one lead on your megameter, always on the casing of the motor. And on the other side, we're gonna check each wire. So one wire to the casing, second wire to the casing, third wire to the casing, and so forth. The part of the casing that you're gonna use as a ground, make sure that area is clean of rust so you have a good connection. If you find that area rusty, I would definitely recommend taking some sort of abrasive material or sandpaper to clean up that area so you have a good grounding connection. Like I mentioned before, your ground is constantly going to stay in its place and then your other lead from your meter, we're going to be checking either each connection coming out or each terminal at the motor. So I'm going to start with the first one. This is the blue wire. So I'm going from the blue wire to ground. The insulation is stripped back so we have the conductor exposed and we connected our alligator clip to that and of course the other side is grounded to the case of the motor. Alright we have our wire set up and it's as simple as holding down the red button for a few seconds. So as we press down the button we're going to pay attention over here to see what indication we have according to the LED light. Okay if you paid attention we had lights coming across here and then we lost it. It says here, no light above 1000 mega ohms. In this case, we are good. We still have the other connection grounded and we're just gonna switch over to our next wire or terminal. Let's see what we get. All right, we lost the light. So once again, we passed 1000 mega ohms and we are good. 
still have the other terminal grounded to the casing and we're going to switch over to the next wire. I'm going to press on the button and check our LED lights. All right, once again, we passed and we have no light indicating we have a reading above 1000 meg ohms. And that is the last terminal or wire that we can check. And in this case, this test has been passed. If you're wondering what reading is good, what reading is bad, well, 100% we know above 1000, we are good. So from 100 and up, we're good. And just cross-reference in this area from 30 to just under 100, it's a caution. And of course, from 30 and below, you're bad. So if you're anywhere in this area, your motor's on the way out and you would want that replaced. If you're close to 100, I mean, you're close to that caution area, so you make your best educated decision of what you're gonna do. And of course, above that, we are good. And it is extremely simple. I definitely recommend everyone has this tool. And if anyone is interested in purchasing this tool, a link will be in this video's description. Because of this style of motor, not only can you say that the insulation for the windings are good, but also for the wires themselves. It is best to isolate the motor and only check the motor itself. So in this case, we can do a more accurate test and you could also add the wires after, but typically I would do that in a separate test. So if you didn't have the wires taken out, you would put one to the casing and then one on each terminal and just continue that process. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues. And if anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.